Hello and welcome to a new talk video. This one is about knowledge and technology. The first thing we can say about technology is that in terms of tools and at a quite a basic level, technology and innovations offer us new ways to experience and observe the world around us. For example, microscopes, telescopes, and even the Hadron Collider. The second thing we can investigate in terms of technology concerns algorithms and big tech and the increasing role that these are having in modern life, especially with regard to how we access knowledge and even curating the knowledge we have access to. This point links very clearly to the key concepts of power and responsibility. You might argue that these algorithms the programmers who make them and the corporations who own them have a lot of power in terms of the knowledge we access. Then we might say that us as knowers have a responsibility for our own knowledge acquisition and how we may mitigate the power that these algorithms have over the knowledge. Thirdly, the increasing sophistication of algorithms, especially relating to artificial intelligence or AI, raises many interesting questions with regard to what it is to be a knower and a thinker. And obviously this relates very clearly to that core unit, knowledge and the knower. Lastly, I'm going to touch upon the ethical dilemmas raised by self-driving cars. One, to illustrate that technology and innovation often brings with it often unforeseen new ethical problems. And secondly, I think this example also reveals certain clues as to how we can possibly differentiate between human thought and human thinkers and artificial intelligence. So, without further ado, let's dive in. With the help of these examples, such as telescopes, algorithms, cell phones, even the Gutenberg printing press, we can define technology as the tools, skills, methods and processes to achieve certain goals. We can also say that technology allows humans and even some species to manipulate the world to suit their needs. As a consequence of these innovations, I think we can also investigate what are the ramifications for the two questions, what do we know and how do we know it? So let's go back to the example of the internet. The democratization, let's say, of the knowledge industry in that anybody is able to post up ideas and comments onto the internet has maybe called for a far greater critical approach to that knowledge that is available in order to discern the difference between what is valid and verified and what is hoax or fake. The other thing we might claim is that because this knowledge is instantly accessible just with our cell phones or with laptops, then the necessity to use our memories in terms of knowledge has been reduced dramatically. Delving a little bit deeper, algorithms are really integral to knowledge and technology. Now let's be very clear, algorithms are really just a programmed set of thought processes or decisions. A good way to think about an algorithm is a recipe. So at the start, you have a very clear idea of what is the outcome. For example, it might be a cake and then you need to assess what ingredients you've got available and what methods you have to incorporate those ingredients to make the cake. Then you are able to process the recipe into an algorithm. So you might say, for example, if I have chocolate, flour and sugar, then I will be able to make a chocolate cake. If on the other hand, I have vanilla essence, flour and sugar, you might go for a Victoria sponge. In terms of technology, algorithms have fantastic potential and that has been realized more and more every day in the areas of human science, with finance, with science itself and also mathematics. People are taking advantage of the fact that once you've programmed the algorithm into the computer, the computer 
is able to process through the algorithm systematically far faster than any human could do. And this itself is revealing the potential that technology and algorithms have of producing knowledge in these different knowledge areas. Therefore, we can now bridge to big data. Big data is really the phenomenon that has resulted from the use of algorithms and technology. Algorithms really allow people to compute an incredible amount of data points in order to look for patterns, trends, and make predictions. Therefore, big data is incredibly powerful, for example, with social media in predicting, manipulating, possibly human behavior in the sciences to understand the incredible complex systems that exist at a molecular level in our bodies and maybe at a level of ecosystems in order to understand better the climate and how those complex systems interrelate with other complex systems. Two real life examples of algorithms and big data that most of us are familiar with are Google and Facebook. Both of these applications really function as gatekeepers for the knowledge we have access to. The algorithms that they use are basically filtering and curating the knowledge that we will receive. Therefore, you might argue that Google and Facebook have a huge amount of power in terms of the knowledge that we have. And therefore, there are questions with regard to responsibilities. Do those corporations and programmers have responsibilities in terms of the quality of knowledge we access? And what are our responsibilities as knowers to maybe mitigate the power that those applications have over our knowledge? And what really, in a practical sense, can we do to have more influence over our own knowledge. The increasing sophistication of algorithms and technology has real implications in terms of a classic theme of philosophy, that is philosophy of the mind, which is really about what is it to be a thinking being or what is it to be sentient. Because of the increasing sophistication of algorithms, it is now possible to create a robot, for example, that can dance and perform complex motor functions in a very similar way that a human being can. At a more kind of cerebral level, uh, Alpha Zero and Deep Blue are able to play very difficult strategy games not only that, they can be grandmasters and can even teach themselves and develop new techniques. So it becomes increasingly complex and difficult to differentiate between human thought and human thinking and artificial intelligence, especially if we accept that algorithms are really just programming into a formal sequence the way we often think in a logical manner. The history of artificial intelligence can really be traced back to the 1950s and Alan Turing, a philosopher, mathematician and computer scientist. He developed the Turing test, which very simply was judging the computer in terms of artificial intelligence whether it could convince another human being that it was also a human being. Thinking back to the developments more recently with regard to Alpha Zero, Deep Blue and even the dancing robots, we could say that again we are judging artificial intelligence in terms of comparing it to human intelligence. The ability to think creatively, to innovate and to self-learn. Starting with the idea of behaviorism, which is a theory in psychology that we can't really say anything about another person's inner 
mental processes beyond the behavior they exhibit. We might then apply this to mathematical knowledge and if you can remember or if you're currently a student in mathematics what it is like to be thinking mathematically. So I've put this example here on the screen that I remember from my days as a math student and often either in the textbook or at the front of the class there would be an example of how to perform a particular calculation. For me as an ex-student of mathematics one of the things that I consider to be different from simply being able to compute the mathematics and having true understanding of mathematics is the difference between, for example, taking the integers in the particular problem, applying it to the example and then producing the right answer and having true understanding of why that mathematical logic functions and why that answer is justified by the process applied. One way to think about this that is revealing in terms of artificial intelligence and even what it is to be a knower is to refer to the thought experiment by John Searle, The Chinese Room. The idea is very simple. For someone who is not a speaker of Chinese, imagine that they are locked in a room and in that room they have a book that basically gives them certain Chinese expressions and that they match up to other Chinese expressions. On the outside of the room you have Chinese speakers and they pass in expressions to the room. That person inside can then look up the expression and match it to the appropriate response and then pass that back out. The people outside of the room, judging the behaviour that they see, the answers, would be justified in inferring that whoever is inside the room understands Chinese. The question is, does this thought experiment reveal what it means to be a thinker in terms of artificial intelligence? And then the next question is, can we also argue that some of our behaviour or what appears to be knowledge, for example in the mathematics class, is nothing more than being able to produce the correct answers and show the behaviour of having, having knowledge, where in fact that real understanding is potentially missing. The last issue I just want to touch upon here is ethics and the idea that technology and innovation will always bring with it new ethical dilemmas and problems. There's a classic example where you can find a TED talk all about self-driving cars and it is the idea that these self-driving cars need to have pre-programmed certain algorithms that make decisions especially in terms of potential accidents. The example given is imagine that you are in a car that is behind a truck and to the right there is a motorbike and to the left maybe another SUV. If there is an accident in front of you the car, the self-driving car, will need to make a decision. A human being, when faced with that dilemma, would make a decision in an instant. Because the car is programmed with an algorithm in advance, what it means is that the programmer needs to decide on the correct course of action. Because the car is programmed in advance, the big difference being that human beings are very much thinking at an emotional level as well as at a rational level. Now of course you could program those emotional inputs into the algorithm but would the algorithm, given that it's pre-planned, be able to react emotionally in the instant and possibly in an irrational way, the same way as a human being. That concludes what is a very short introduction to the unit knowledge and technology. My focus really has been to link technology and the developments within it to the two questions that concern us in talk, what do we know and how do we know it? And my argument would be that innovations in technology 
are really changing all the time our answers to those two fundamental questions. The other thing that I think is very revealing about an investigation into technology is what it really means to be a knower. Artificial intelligence is both revealing to us the ways that we do think in a logical or algorithmic way, but also the differences in that human knowers are both irrational and emotional thinking things. So, thanks very much for watching. Please subscribe and don't forget to smash the like button.